so here we are, again. Sometimes there's a sense that we're just going to keep doing this until we get it right. <laughs> there are not too many traditions that go beyond, say, 10 years, or 50, or 100, or 500, 2,000 years that we have gathered to hear this story and to experience it. I think part of the reason why this story captures us so much is because we don't know what to do with it. And I think the word no is the key problem. We are a society and a people that likes to know things, and the resurrection doesn't lend itself to knowing things. What do we know? We know that in first century Palestine, there was a Jewish rabbi in the northern part of the country there who was known, like several others, for healing the sick, for proclaiming good news, for feeding those who were hungry, who eventually made his way to Jerusalem, where he was arrested, where he was executed by the Roman authority for treason. We know all of that without even looking at the Bible. That is stated in human history in other resources. But what do we believe about that? How do we understand the intent and the meaning? And that's where it starts to get messy. That's a story that I told you right there that could have been told about others. People live. People die. It's a story that happens all the time. Some are more famous than others, but we know that within three centuries of that event, this backwater rabbi would have started a movement that became the official religion of the Roman Empire. That's kind of big. It's kind of big. In fact, it suggests that there's something else going on there. It suggests that there is a deeper meaning to what is happening. And again, that's where it gets mushy. We know things. We know how fast things fall in Earth's gravitational pull. We know all kinds of things. We know many things about the hard sciences. We know things about biology and medicine. But when we start talking about knowing things like love, suddenly doesn't lend itself to the same kinds of instruments, does it? Doesn't lend itself to test tubes, to spreadsheets. I think I know love. Or do we say we know what it feels like? I have experienced it. I believe in love. You know, love. One of those things that we wrap and shape our entire lives around and yet can't nail down or pin down or define and know in the way in which we know so many other things. It's kind of there, right? And yet we would say it's core to how we understand that God intended us to live as human beings. The women are showing up at the tomb. One of the curiously persistent pieces of the story in all four gospel readings. They show up, and there are these men there. And the stone has been rolled away. This is not a small stone. It would have been a big thing to move this out of the way. And the tomb is empty. So what do they know? What do they know? They know the tomb is empty. Aha! He must have come back from the dead. That would be the most obvious explanation, right? 
Most of us showing up at a cemetery and seeing someone buried into the ground, coming back the next day and seeing that grave open might not leap to that as the first explanation. Where, where did they take his body? What have you done with him? What's happening here? We know a week ago that Jesus processed into Jerusalem to much fanfare and ceremony. There was a sense of power in his coming, a sense that they occupied the temple for a period of time until maybe, maybe being pushed out of the city limits overnight. The authorities were so concerned and so scared that they came to him in the middle of the night for fear of arresting him in broad daylight. They did not take him to the high priest's house, but his father-in-law's. We have him. Let's keep it quiet, though. We don't want there to be a scene. Eventually, there's kind of this sort of trial. He's executed by the state for treason and then buried. And the women show up at the tomb and find it empty. Is somebody watching them? Is somebody writing down their identities? Who goes to the tomb of a convicted traitor to the empire, right? I, di I didn't know him. And they show up, they see it's empty, they hear the good news, and they respond not, yes, is there something to eat? <laughs> it's Easter after all, right? No. They respond first with fear and great joy. Is this good news? My guess is that this was pretty far out of their frame of reference. And the mind was probably not up to speed yet. And yet they went and shared that good news. As we think of the things that we know, those are the things that we're comfortable talking about. We might know what the interest rate on the loan on our car is, but let's get five economists in a room and talk about what the economy is going to do for the rest of this year. Oh, well, suddenly it's not quite so precise. There are things that we know and things that we believe. We know that Jesus is no longer in that tomb, but what does it mean? What is the power of it? What does it mean for us today? I think, first of all, it means that it's a messy story for us as modern people. We're not entirely certain what to do with it, but the force of a story that over three centuries becomes the faith of the Roman Empire and that 2,000 years later would gather hundreds of us thousands of miles away to share that same story again. It is as if 2,000 years ago there was a big bang that is continuing to roll through history. It is rolling through history with the love of God whose sacrifice on our behalf brought God into this messy human life. As you leave today still trying to get a handle to know this story, take comfort that you will not know it. You will not know it. We believe it. Just as we believe in the love of family and friends, just as we believe in the power of the body brought together and the difference that it can make in the world, these are things that we believe and don't know. And yet they shape our lives and change the world, just as Christ did leaving that tomb. So it's okay to be uncomfortable without knowing, to live in the mess as Christ did, 
But take heart, when it all was dark and seemed lost, a way was made by our God. A way that we might be invited to follow in love, that we might love those around us. Amen.